Okay, so in this video, I want to show you some really cool um, current active weather data. And so if you have the ability, go ahead and open up a browser and go to earth.nullschool.net and it should pull up this pretty amazing graphic. The default here is showing us the atmospheric winds over the entire globe. So here's sort of a side view and we can spin it around and look from our, um, with the pole centered as well. And well, what do we see? Does it look like it matches up with what we've been saying? Well, one thing that definitely stands out is there's huge differences between these very large scale patterns that we have out in the oceans and um, the things that we have going on the land, which are going to be much more influenced by temperature variations and uh, elevation changes, okay? We do see that the general wind pattern in uh, North America is moving towards the right. And let's see, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like up a little higher in the atmosphere. So when you go higher up into the atmosphere, you actually have less pressure pushing down on you. So in this model, to move upwards, we're gonna go up to a lower pressure level, so 250 is actually quite high. And you can see our scale has totally changed. We used to be down here in the blue, which is actually relatively um, low velocity winds. And now we're getting up into some really high winds that we can see. So. Here we have it, and you can see these just jets of wind blowing through the upper atmosphere, no continents to get in the way up there. And what you can kind of almost see is that there's actually two really fast moving wind streams. There's this outer one, and there's also an inner one, okay? Those are the jet streams, and they happen at those places on our plot where those um, high and low pressure uh, areas were, right? We should be able to see it even better in the southern hemisphere because the southern hemisphere is mostly ocean. So yes, there you have it. You have your um, more equatorial jet stream and then you have your more polar sort of arctic jet stream down closer to the poles. So those stand out very clearly in the upper atmosphere. If we want to check out precipitation, we can go back to the surface and we can look at this. Um, it's called TPW for total precipitable water, meaning that if all the water in a column of air was to fall out, um, how much would that be? That can be a pretty good approximation to the ability for rain to occur in different locations. And what we see is definitely, definitely a lot more rain along the equator. And then moving upwards, we can kind of sort of see a second rain band, but it's very much getting mixed up with the continents in the Northern Hemisphere. So let's go see if that's any clearer in the Southern Hemisphere. We do maybe see this second bit in here, but it doesn't look like it's super easy to see today that there are these secondary uh, rainforest locations, but still a really, really cool data set. I strongly ever encourage everyone to go check it out, earth.nullschool.net, and you can go ahead and play around with switching the different data types and um, just seeing uh, what you can see. And with that, I am going to conclude this video activity. Uh, don't be afraid to rewind it and watch it again if you missed something. Uh, there were a lot of really important skills that were synthesized in that first video, and um, it might be worth it for you to actually watch it more than once just to make sure that you follow all of the thought processes behind it. Um, so in addition to being able to create that sort of global picture of global climate, it's really important that you understand how to create it, right? It's not about memorizing the final product, it's about understanding the underlying scientific concepts 
that get us there about warm and cold air and how it rises and what that means for the weather. Okay, with that, I'll conclude this video activity and uh, good luck. I hope your map looks great.